Welcome to Daily Reading the Word for May the 16th. I'm Jonathan Kinsler. Today's scripture reading is found in 1 Kings chapters 5 and 6 and John chapter 4 verses 1 through 13. The title of my devotional is God's Permanent Temple. And we're going to be looking at 1 Kings chapter 6 verse 12 which says, Concerning this house which you are building, if you will walk in my statutes and execute my ordinances and keep all my commandments by walking in them, then I will carry out my word with, with, with you, which I spoke to David, your father. So upon completing the temple, the word of the Lord came to Solomon that he would carry out his promises to David. There were several purposes of the temple. Its central one was to give God's people a permanent place to worship him. We need to understand that God's desire was always to dwell with his people. In Leviticus chapter 26, verses 11 to 12, it sets this out. Moreover, I will make my dwelling among you and my soul will not reject you. I will also walk among you and be your God and you shall be my, my people. We see this also in the last chapters of Revelation. Um, God's promise that he will dwell with his people. The purpose of the Exodus was that God's people would come to the place he would show them where they would worship him. And of course, it's first of all on Mount Sinai, but then they travel through, through uh, actually at Sinai, I should say, they construct a tabernacle there. But the tabernacle was which was also a place of worship by its very nature was only supposed to be temporary. Now, the nice thing about the tabernacle was that it was mobile. It allowed them to carry it in the wilderness and even into the promised land. And even there, while they were waiting for God to raise up a king um, and waiting for Solomon also to build the temple, the tabernacle served uh, as a place where God would meet with his people. We see this, for example, in Exodus 3, verse 12, where it's God says, certainly I will be with you and this shall be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God out at this mountain. That the sign to Moses of his being with him is that the worship will take place at, at the mountain where he currently stands. The, the sign will also be the deliverance of God's people. Um, and so pointing forward to God's salvation. But the purpose is not simply to save them from Egypt, but for worship. Pretty important for us to understand we're not saved simply from our enemies, but to a place of worship. Now, the strong stone structure of the physical temple, which Solomon built, was a symbol of God's promise that he would always dwell with his people. In spite of the appearance of such strength, however, it was still conditional on the obedience of his people to obey his commands. And Israel would find that out when they were conquered by the Babylonians. Then it, that was in 586 BC and the temple was destroyed. Then when the second temple was built and in 70 AD, the temple is destroyed by the Romans. The temple was never, the physical temple, I should say, was never to be a guarantee that God was dwelling among them. The exiles, even themselves, the conquering of, their, of the nation by a foreign power, spoke against that and revealed that that was not God's, God's purpose. They were not to look to the physical temple itself, but rather... What was always required for God to dwell with us was obedience and faithfulness. And it's important to realize that the outward law and the physical temple are shadows of what God intends in Christ. They never did change the heart of the people, neither the law nor the temple. They point forward to God's full plan where his people would be his temple where God would dwell in our hearts. And that would be possible because God's law would be written there. He would pour out, give his spirit and get, put it into our hearts and enable us to walk according to his commands. We see that in Hebrews chapter 8, verse 17, um, which of course is a um, also a quotation of Jeremiah 31, 31 to 34. We also see similarly in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 5 to 7. Now, thanks to the work of Christ, the true cornerstone, this temple will never be destroyed. What Jesus is building will never be done away with. It's, 
an eternal temple to the Lord by the Spirit. It's not made with human hands. It's actually made by Jesus Christ and by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so do you enjoy God's presence on a daily basis? Do you appreciate that of what God has done for us in Christ to make us his people, even might make us part of his temple. But we need to remember that faithfulness and obedience are required. And so are you also committed to building up God's temple? First of all, yourself being built up in, the, in prayer in the Holy Spirit. Uh, are you dedicated to being strong in the Lord and in his mighty power? And are you committed to building up his people, encouraging one another? Um, especially even as Hebrews 10, 24 and 25 talk about not neglecting meeting together, even as we see the day approaching. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this word that you have always desired to be with your people, a permanent place, the tabernacle, the mobility that you go with your people and the temple, the permanency come together in Christ, but in a much more powerful way where you cause us to walk in your ways. You give us a new heart. You place your spirit within us. Thank you, Lord, that you even write your law on our, on our hearts, that, Lord, we can do it. Lord, I thank you that you love us that much. You want to be with us. You want us to know you. Lord, help us to have that fervent desire to be with you and to be faithful to your will. In your name we pray. Amen.